Good evening, everyone, and Shabbat Shalom. Oh, I know it's been a terrible week, but we can still do better than that as we greet Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Welcome to Congregation Beth Ahaba. I'm so glad that you're here tonight to celebrate Shabbat and in solidarity with our people all over the world. I'm Rabbi Scott Nagel. Cantor Sarah Beck Berman is at her best friend's wedding this weekend. She'll be back tomorrow for the B'nai Mitzvah. Um, but of course, thank God, Natan is here, our music director at the piano. <clears throat> and the two of us uh, will make do. In light of recent events, however, we are going to rise together because our opening song can be found on page 374, page 374 at the bottom of the page. We'll begin this evening with Hatikva. suffering way over there, and our people are in turmoil, and we are right here. When the news is heart-wrenching and so little is clear, grant us the fortitude, the courage, the care to educate others so that they are aware to declare solidarity with Israel amidst the overflowing of tears, to lobby for our government's aid amidst burgeoning warfare, and to give our own tzedakah, for we have so much to share. To show up at vigils which brings hope much more near, and to invite many others, for their presence is dear. And Holy One, O oh Holy One, remind us what we do when the pain so hard to bear, we hope, yes we hope, that's how we'll push through the fear. We turn now in our Sidorim, in our prayer books, to page two. Page two, as we prepare to kindle the lights of Shabbat, Lucas and Aiden, can you hear me out there? I'd like to invite up Laura Harrison and Lucas Pfaff and Aiden Pfaff to lead us in the lighting and blessing over the Shabbat candles. By the way, I don't know why Lucas left, but no one ever needs to leave this room with a child. It is the sign of a healthy congregation, and I'd much rather pay, pray to the sound of children laughing or crying or otherwise than to silence. So, I mean, where are they? I don't know. All right, it's okay. You can still light the candles. Page two, everyone. Wow. I mean, that was impressive. It's been a rough week. 
It's been a rough <laughs> week. Glad I wasn't the only one. Thank you. Okay. Everybody, should we try it again? Let's let's use it. You want to use the match this time? Uh, sure. Hey, Lucas, are you out there? Still no Lucas. No, I know he's around here. Can you light this? Getting close. <laughs> okay. It's just I'm gonna like, help. I'm used to electric candles. We have a kid. Go. Thank you, Coach. You're welcome. Page two. <laughs> page two. Page two. We continue on page two. Barukata Adonai, Eloheinu Melakalam, Asher Kiddishanu, Bemitzvata, Vitsivanu, Lahalik Nair, Shel Shabbat. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, sovereign of the universe, who hallows us with mitzvot, commanding us to kindle the light of Shabbat. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, asher kiddushanu b'mitzvotah v'tzihimahanu, Lehad Liknev, Lehad Liknev, Shel Shabbat. Thank you so much, Laura. And please extend our thanks to Lucas and Aiden as well. We continue now on page five, page five with Kiddush, blessing over wine or grape juice, sanctifying the Sabbath day. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Borei pari hagafen. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Asher kiddushanu b'mitzvotav, V'ratzavanu, V'shabbat kodsho, V'yahavahu v'ratzon hinchilanu, Zikaron lemase vreshit ki hu yom tachila lamikrait kodesh zechelat zihat mitzrayim ki vanu vacharta v'otanu ki dashta. Mikol chamim v'shabat kachecha v'yahava uvratzon in chaltanu baruch atah Adonai mekadesh hashabat amen l'chayim. Delicious. We continue now on page 28. <clears throat> page 28 as we rise together for our call to worship in Barhu. Yalla la 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 barakhu et adonai ha ha mevora baruch adonai ha ha mevora Very 
he is. We continue together on page 34, page 34 as we prepare for Shema. Hear, O Israel, Adonai is our God, Adonai is one. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Shema Yisrael Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kivu Malchuto leolam vahe Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Shema Yisrael Adonai You may be seated. We continue together on page 36. Page 36, please join me in Via Hafta. Via Hafta, eh, 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 Adonai Elohecha, Bechol of Avcha, Bechol Nafshecha, Ubechol Meodecha, Veha Yuhu, Adavari Maele. Asher anochi hi mitzavecha Hayom alivavecha Vishinantam levanecha Vidibarta baham Beshiftecha bavetecha Uvlechtecha vaderech Uvshok becha uvkumecha Ukshartam leohot ayadecha Vehayu le tota fohot, bene necha, uchtav taham, al mezuzot betecha, uvisharecha, limahan tis keru, vasite metko mitzvotai, vitem kiroshim lelohechem, ahani. Adonai Eloheichem, Asher hotze tiechem, Meheret mitzrayim, Liot lachem lelochim, Ani Adonai Eloheichem, Adonai Eloheichem, Emet. <coughs> we read together at the bottom of page 39. In a world torn by violence and pain, a world far from wholeness and peace, give us the courage to say, Adonai, there is one God in heaven and earth. The high heavens declare your glory. May earth reveal your justice and love. From bondage in Egypt, we were delivered. At Sinai, we bound ourselves to your way. Inspired by prophets and instructed by sages, time and again, we overcame oppressive forces. Though our failings are many and our faults are great, it has been our glory to bear witness to our God, keeping alive in dark ages your vision of a world redeemed. Let us continue to work for the day when the nations will be one and at peace, then shall we rejoice as Israel did, singing on the shores of the sea. And we continue on page 40 with our song of freedom, Micha Mocha. Micha Mocha Baheli Madonai Micha Mocha Nehedar Bakodesh 
No rate he lot Oh say fellas Oh say fellas Mi hamocha Baheli Madonai Mi hamocha Nehedar We continue now on page 44. Page 44 as we take this time amidst this turmoil to celebrate Shabbat. Vishamru v'nei Yisrael et ha-Shabbat Lasod et ha-Shabbat Lidoret ha-Marit olam Vishamru v'nei Yisrael et ha-Shabbat Lasod et ha-Shabbat Lidoret ha-Marit olam Bene Uvein, Bene Israel, Bene Israel, O Tit Leolam. Veshamru, Bene Israel, Et Ashabat, Lasod Et Ashabat, Lidorit Amberit Olam. Ki sheshet yamim, asa Adonai, asa Adonai, et hashamayim, ve et haaret, ve shamru, ve ne Yisrael, et hashabat, la sol de hashabat, le doret amberit olam. Uvayom hashvi, Shavat vayinafash, Shavat vayinafash, Shavat vayinafash. Ve, let me hear you, Ve, Shamru vene Yisrael, Et ha-Shabbat L'asot et ha-Shabbat L'edor et amperit olam Yeah, good work everyone. Well, we've come now to the central portion of our worship, tefillah, so we rise together as we turn to page 46. Page 46, but I want to have you hold your hand there and turn to page 50 and make sure you have this note that it is indeed now winter time after Simcha Torah. So when we get to that first indented section in the transliteration in the Hebrew or in the English, it is now winter time. So we will say, Mashiv Haruach Umorid Hagashem. And we will say that all the way through Pesach. Page 46. Yalla lai lai lai, 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 Adonai. Sifatai tiftach, ufia git hilatecha. Adonai, open up my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. Yella lai lai lai, 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 yella lai lai. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu velohe avoteinu v'imoteinu 
Elohe Avraham, Elohe Yitzhak, Elohe Yaakov, Elohe Sarah, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Rachel, Elohe Leah. Ha'el Hagadol Hagibor Vahano Raha El El Yohon Gomel Hasadim Tovim Vekone Hako Vezoher Hasde Avod Vima Ohod Ume Vigula Liv Nevenechem Lima Anshimo Beahava Melech Ozeru Moshiano Magain Baruch Atah Adonai Magain Avraham Bezrat Sarah Atagi Borlelam Adonai Mechaye Hakol Atah Rav Lehoshia Mashiv Haruach Umorid Hadashem Mechalchel chayim bechesed, mechayei hako berachamim rabim. So homech noflim verofech oholim, umatihir asurim, umekahayem emunato lishenei afar. Mi chamo chaba gevurot umi domelach melek me mihit umechaye umat miak Yeshua neemana talechayot ako baruch atah Adonai mechaye ako. Ata kadosh v'shim ha kadosh u'kdoshim b'chol yom yalalu chaselach baruch ata Adonai ha'el hakadosh. You may be seated. <clears throat> we read together on the top of page fifty-five. Page fifty-five. May these hours of rest and renewal open our hearts to joy and our minds to truth. May all who struggle find rest on this day. May all who suffer find solace. May all who hurt find healing on this day. May all who despair find a purpose. May all who hunger find fulfillment on this day. And may this day fulfill its promise. Baruch Ata Adonai, Mikadesh HaShabbat. We take a few moments of silent prayer and reflection, either with the words on the page or the meditations of our own heart. Continue on page 62. Page 62 on the bottom of the page with our prayer for peace. O say shalom. O say shalom bim Roma. Say shalom, Aleinu. 
ועל כל ועל כל ישראל וימרו עמים עושה שלום במרומיו הוא יעשה שלום עלינו ועל כל ועל כל ישראל ואמרו, אמרו, אמן. עושה שלום במרומיו, הוא יעשה שלום עלינו. ועל כל ועל כל ישראל, ואמרו, אמן. עושה שלום במרומיו, הוא יעשה שלום עלינו. ועל כל ועל כל ישראל, ואמרו, אמרו, אמן. ואמרו, אמן. We turn together now to page 253, page 253, as we dedicate this moment of worship to those in need of healing. We pray for all those in Israel who need healing. We pray for all those around our world who are hurting. This week, we pray for Bob Marks, Seth Ginther, Neil Gleberman, Jeffrey Teeger, Charles Lebeau, Yaakov Kogan, Rivka Kogan, Colton Richard Schultz Boyd, Max Staten Parfit, David Talheimer, Doug Heidman, Rabbi Jack Spiro, Randall Markham Berman, Andrea Bernadette Beam, Lorraine Badovsky, Kathy Marks, Paul Balinoff, Arnold Strolson, Marilyn Flax, Audrey Landers, and Alan Arkava. And if you'd like to share the name of a friend, family member, loved one, yourself, anyone at all who could benefit from our prayers of healing on this Shabbat, I ask you to please share their name aloud or in your thoughts as I scan the room. We pray for their healing as we pray for all those in our world who need healing. We pray for their healing as we pray for the healing of our broken world. Misha Bayrach, page 253. Misha <clears throat> Bayrach, <clears throat> May the source of strength who bless the ones before us help us find the courage to make our lives a blessing and let us say Amen. Misheberach Imoteinu 
Bless those in need of healing with Rafuha Shlehima, the renewal of body, the renewal of spirit, and let us say Amen. Am Yisrael Chai. The Jewish people will live. We struggle to make sense of the terrible pogrom perpetrated against our brothers and sisters in Israel this time last week. To process the loss of life and the suffering inflicted against us, we worry for the scores of hostages taken and we worry for our family who continues to be under attack. We worry why, what might come from Israel's other enemies. And we worry for Israel's soldiers who, despite their yearning for peace, must defend our people, our state, and our land. May God be with them with their families, and with all the citizens of the Jewish state. May God comfort the citizens of Israel, and may God spread over them a sukkot shalom, a canopy of peace and healing. May the shield of Abraham rise up in their defense. This week in Torah, we read the Parsha of Genesis, the beginning. We learn that in a fit of jealousy and rage, Cain slaughtered. Cain kills his brother Abel. That we read this portion every year reminds us that evil is ever-present in our midst. Evil is what we witnessed this past weekend with the savage nature of our enemies' attacks on innocent men, women, infants, children, and the elderly. We are horrified and outraged by the slaughter of our people. In God's response, to Cain's actions, we learn that evil cannot be ignored, that wickedness cannot be tolerated. And so it is time for our liberal Jewish community and the liberal community at large to finally wake up and recognize what is happening. To all of us who consider ourselves human rights and social justice advocates, me included, to all passionate college students, to all of us who identify as progressives whose mission is a fair and equitable world, know this. What we witnessed this past week has nothing to do with Palestinian justice or freedom. The bloody massacre we saw last week is called a pogrom. Pogroms have been perpetrated upon Jewish people for centuries. What we witnessed was a highly coordinated extermination of Jewish life that we now know was in the works for two years. There is no political excuse 
or justification for it. Period. Skipping past quickly sympathy for Israeli victims and moving right along to discussing the plight of the Palestinians is exactly the kind of response Hamas is aiming for. They want their butchering of Jews to be rationalized, justified, and sanitized. They want the resulting global spike in hate crimes against Jews to be ignored. And that's exactly what has been happening, happening slowly over this week. Because the only appropriate response to this pogrom is to call it what it is, what it was, and to condemn it. We can no longer allow murderous evil to masquerade as freedom fighting. If anyone's response to the pogrom is yes, but, then they, they need to take a moment to ask themselves why the indiscriminate killing of civilians is defensible to them in this one and only case. If it is, maybe it's because they are anti-Semitic. If somebody believes that every human being has the right to live in their own land and live in peace and safety, except for Israelis and Jews, then they are anti-Semitic by definition. Hamas is a terrorist organization whose very existence is predicated on murder and oppression. Their very mission statement calls for the eradication of the state of Israel and all Jews living in the region. Hamas are not freedom fighters. They are an extremist religious death cult. Judaism, on the other hand, holds life in the highest possible value. Israel's military is the only one in the world that is not called an army, but a defense force. Israel's military is the only one in the world who tells everyone, move out of the area. In 24 hours, we're going to bomb here. No other military in the world tells their enemy their plans exactly when and where they're going to attack. Hamas did not warn Israel at all. And the IDF, the Israel Defense Force, has done this every single time. They have an attacked a location. They have let it be known publicly and have even dropped flyers from the air prior to the age of the internet. And instead of the world thanking the IDF, thank you for telling us your military operation with 24 hours so that people can move, innocent civilians can move out of harm's way. No other military in the world would ever or has ever done such a thing. Instead of saying thank you, they say, that's not enough time. The only appropriate response to Hamas is a unilateral rejection of mass murder as a political and religious tool. We must finally own and understand that the killing of Jews is not a response to anything. It is Hamas's plan. It has always been Hamas's plan. They are mass murderers who want the extinction of the Jews. They have no moral case whatsoever. It's time for all of us, the entire liberal community, 
We who have enjoyed the luxury of armchair Middle East activism from the distance and safety of our American homes to recognize and condemn evil when we see it. We cannot hide behind quote unquote complicated feelings or complicated situations about Israel or about the Israeli government. There are thousands of Israelis and Jews who have been tirelessly protesting in the streets against the Netanyahu regime for years. And they got murdered too. There have been Jews standing up for Palestinians and Palestinians' rights for years. And they got murdered too. This isn't about a political stance. It's about standing up to extremist evil. To those, to any of us, who think of ourselves as allies, now is the time to be one and speak up. We, your Jewish friends, your Jewish family, need you. I feel for the plight of the Palestinians. I really do. But the time has come now to place the blame on their situation where it is due, on Hamas. Enough is enough. Here is some history you may not know. In 1988, Hamas published its charter calling for the destruction of Israel. Hamas first employed suicide bombing five years later in 1993, specifically a few months before PLO leader Yasser Arafat and Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin signed the Oslo Accords. The historic pact in Oslo established self-government for parts of the West Bank and Gaza under a newly created entity called the PA, the Palestinian Authority. Hamas condemned those accords, for they were not looking for actual independence or statehood. They are not interested in a two-state solution. Hamas also condemned the PLOs and Israel's recognition of each other as entities, even though Arafat and Rabin agreed In 1997, the United States designated Hamas as a foreign terrorist organization, just like ISIS. And Hamas has been the authority in Gaza since shortly after Israel withdrew from the territory completely in 2005. The following year, Hamas won an election, an election winning the majority of seats in the Palestinian Authority's legislature and formed a government in which Palestinians have not been able to vote again in since that time. You don't have to take my word for it. The independent watchdog group Freedom House found in 2020 that the Hamas-controlled government has no effective or independent mechanisms for ensuring transparency in its funding, procurements, or operations. Hamas also controls the Gazan media, civilian activism on social media, the political opposition, and non-governmental organizations, leaving it without any mechanisms for accountability. And Hamas has fired rockets and mortars into Israel since the day the group took power in the Gaza Strip in 2006. Let me ask you this. If a bordering territory or country called for your country's destruction by its very charter and launched rockets into your territory from day one of their regime, 
Would you allow open and unrestricted borders with them? Or would you respond as Israel did, controlling all crossings? Would you cut off all ties? Or would you do as Israel also did, providing power and water and weekly humanitarian aid? While we're speaking about borders, I should remind everyone that before 1967, Gaza was a part of Egypt. And Gaza still borders Egypt on the south. And that border is just as restricted, if not more, than the border of Gaza with Israel. And Egypt provides no power or water or humanitarian aid. It does not. Egypt does not allow citizens of Gaza to work in Egypt or immigrate to Egypt. Yet no one ever mentions that when talking about how Gaza is restricted in movement. Why is that? Is it because Egypt is not a Jewish country and does not contain Jews? Maybe. And that's anti-Semitism again. As far as Hamas as a leadership organization in their own area of the West Bank, it has an agenda. And its agenda is not the betterment or support of the Palestinian people. The primary income of Gaza comes from humanitarian and foreign aid. And Hamas could, but chooses not to, use that income to build up infrastructure, not to support the people, and not to provide for their their well-being. Rather, Hamas chooses to use most of that income to fund attacks against Israel. They maintain an extensive government-run system of life pensions paid to both terrorists who successfully murder Israelis and to the families of terrorists who died while successfully murdering Israelis. And that those pensions increase for each additional Israeli murder and often greatly exceed the salary received by many Palestinian civil employees including teachers. In recent years, the annual total of these terrorist pension payments has exceeded $300 million. $300 million paid to kill Israelis. They also use those funds to operate school systems and summer camps that relentlessly indoctrinate Palestinian children in hatred of Israelis and Jews. The schools falsely teach that Israelis are the equivalent of Nazis perpetrating a holocaust of Palestinian society. And they glorified suicide bombers as the topmost heroes of Palestinian society. The state-run newspapers and television stations convey the same messages across the region. After each successful terrorist murder of one or more Israelis, Palestinian communities across the Gaza Strip erupt in public celebrations to include dancing in the streets, lighting fireworks, firing weapons, and handing out children, handing out candy to children. All of this is paid for by foreign aid. Just to put it into perspective, the American taxpayers financed aid to the Palestinians in approximately $500 million last year, meaning the terrorist pension payments comprise over half of all U.S. annual aid. This could be money well spent, but it is not. So let us put the blame for the plight of the Palestinian people where it is due on Hamas 
itself. It is time. Israel remains the only state in the world that is constantly threatened with extinction by immediate and more remote neighbors. From the onset, the rhetoric is that Israel is chastised when responding to these acts seeking extinction. The response to Israel is that it's chastised for using its disproportionate use of force. This rhetoric is not used anywhere else in the world. It's reserved exclusively for Israel. Turning Israel the victim into the aggressor. Because Israel is and always has been subject to different standards because it is a Jewish state filled with Jews. From the onset of the Arab-Jewish conflict in the wake of World War I, the Arab states and the Palestinian Arabs strove to prevent the reestablishment of Jewish statehood in the land of Israel, as stipulated by the League of Nations in 1922 and its successor, the United Nations, in 1947. Failing to achieve this goal, they resolved to destroy the nascent Jewish state at birth, not with the purpose, by their own words, of establishing an Arab state on its ruins, but to divide its territory among the neighboring Arab states. In the words of the Arab League Secretary General Abdel Raham Azam, Transjordan's King Abdullah was to swallow up the central hill regions of Palestine with access to the Mediterranean Sea at Gaza. The Egyptians would get the Negev, the Galilee would go to Syria, except the coastal part as far as Acre would be added to Lebanon. They did not at that time call for the creation of a Palestinian state. By contrast, the Zionist movement and the state of Israel has always sought coexistence, both with the surrounding Arab states and with Palestinian Arabs, while at the same time seeking national self-determination. Zionist and Israeli leaders facing geopolitical and demographic constraints and self-imposed normative restrictions have always been willing to compromise on their territorial goals, ranging from the initial acceptance of the two-state solution when it was first evoked in July 1937 by the Peel Commission and again by the UN General Assembly in 1947. In 1947, both the Palestinians and the Israelis were offered land. One, a great, beautiful, big piece of land, and the other a crappy piece of land. And one group said, yes, thank you very much, we'll take it. And the other group said, no thanks, we want the whole thing. Despite popular opinion, it was the Jews who were offered the crappy piece of land and said, thank you very much, we'll take it and share. And it was the Palestinians who were offered the good and larger piece of land that said, no thank you, we want the whole thing, and instead declared war. And just to remind you, they wanted the whole thing, not to form their own country, but to divide it up among the existing kings and countries. Nobody talks about that. And the idea of a two-straight solution was offered and rejected again in the Oslo era only on their terms. Viewed from a comparative perspective, Jerusalem's military con uh, Israel's military conduct has been exceedingly restrained, especially 
in the view of the perennial existential threat it confronts. Yet its right to self-defense, to national existence, continues to be challenged by its enemies' explicit genocidal intentions and indiscriminate practices are ignored and whitewashed. While the inadvertent killing of a single Palestinian civilian in the course of an Israeli counter-terrorist counter -terror operation can trigger an international uproar, the massacre of over half a million Syrians by their unelected ruler and decades-long repression of the Iranian people by their Islamic rulers are hardly ever news and you don't know about. Why? Jews are not involved. Now, of course, Israel deserves attention and scrutiny, as does every other nation. But it also merits equal treatment. Nothing more and nothing less. But Israel does not enjoy equal status at all. Israel is the only UN member state whose very right to exist is under constant challenge. No one would dare question the right to exist of many other countries whose basis for statehood is infinitely more questionable than Israel's, such as those who are created by brute force, occupation, or distant mass makers. Just look around, think about how many nations fit those categories. Why then is it only ever open hunting season on Israel? Could it have possibly anything to do with the fact that it's the only Jewish majority country in the world? And that anti-Semitism is as old as Judaism itself, 4,000 years old? Israel's the only country in the world that has won all of its major wars for survival and self-defense, yet is confronted by defeated adversaries and international organizations that insist on dictating the terms of peace. Everyone else, that right is reserved to the winners. Israel is the only country in the world with a separate and permanent agenda item, number seven, at the Geneva-based UN Human Rights Council. No other member state, including serial human rights violators like North Korea, Syria, Iran, and the Sudan, there's no agenda items for them. The only sole liberal democracy in the Middle East is treated this way blatantly and biased because of the way it works. The bad guys circle the wagon to protect one another and at the same time gang up on Israel, creating an automatic majority against it. Israel is also the only country condemned by name out of all the countries in the world as a World Health Organization violator of health. Think about Africa and the AIDS epidemic. Think about the drugs that are being held from people who need them in Sudan. Think about countries who do not give their citizens access to clean water. And yet Israel is the only named country by the World Health Organization, despite the fact that Israel provides world-class medical assistance to Syrians wounded in their own country's civil war, and to Palestinians living in Hamas ruled Gaza, and has achieved one of the world's highest life expectancy rates for all of its citizens, Jews and non-Jews alike. It is among the very first medical responders to humanitarian crises wherever they marry car all over the world, from Haiti to Nepal, and it's daily advancing the frontiers of medicine for everyone. Yet it's the only country named in my name of the World Health Organization. Why do I have to say it again? Israel is the only state targeted by BDS, Boycott, Divestment, and Sanctions Movement. Has anyone seen any significant campus activity that takes aim at true human right offenders 
including some in Israel's neighborhood, who behead, forcibly convert, expel Christians, drop chemically laced barrel bombs on civilians, deny Palestinians full right, persecute LGBTQ plus communities, use capital punishment even for minors with abandon, and still perform female circumcision. There's been no movement on any campus to boycott, to divest, or sanction any of those. Why? Do I have to say it again? Given political realities, tackling any of these instances of egregious double standards and blatant hypocrisy can be a daunting challenge. I know some of you are sitting there and disagree with me. But this week has proven that we can no longer be silent. Especially when the chief Middle East correspondent of CNN said Israel had it coming. And when the blame for last week's attack is being assigned to Israel more and more every day that we move away from it, even here in our own state. Do you remember the old advertisement for Jewish rye bread? Remember? You don't have to be Jewish to love rye bread. Do you remember that? No one? Yeah, Liebman's. Maybe Was that a New York thing? All right, maybe it was a New York, right? You don't have to be Jewish to love Jewish rye bread, right? You don't have to be Jewish to love a bagel. Well, surely you don't have to be a pro-Israel activist to be troubled by the grossly unjust treatment of Israel this week and in general. We cannot stay silent any longer. All it takes is a capacity for true and equal moral outrage to see the truth as it really is. May we and the entire world see that truth soon. Amen. Shabbat Shalom. We return to our Sidorim, to our prayer books, as we turn together to page 282, page 282, and I invite Matt to come up and open the ark so that I don't hurt my back. Please rise. Aleinu lishabeach l'adon hakol, l'adet gedud l'aliot zeher b'reshit, shelo asanu kigoye haratzot, velo samanu k'mishpachot ha'adama, shelo sam chelkenu kahem, v'gor aleinu k'chol hamona. Vanachnu korim, umishkachavim, umodim. Lifne melech, malchei hamlachim, hakadosh boruchu. Vineemar, vehaya Adonai, the melech al kor haaret. Bayom hahu, bayom hahu. Ie Adonai Echad Ushemo 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 Echad Okay, go ahead. You may be seated. We continue now on page 294, page 294. 
as we remember those who we've loved and lost. And on this day, as we mourn all those lost in the war in Israel, we say, El Male Rachamim, exalted, merciful God, who upholds the widows and embraces the orphans. Grant perfect rest under the wings of your presence in the lofty heights of the sacred and pure, whose light forever lights up the skies to the souls of the residents of the state of Israel, men, women, young and old who were killed, slaughtered, and ruthlessly massacred by cold-blooded terrorists in Stadrot, Ofakim, Nidiot, Ya'ar Ra'im, Be'ira, Netiv, Ha'asara, Cholit, near Oz, and other communities on the, Gaza, on the Gaza border. O Master of mercy, let their souls ascend and cradle them eternally under your wings. The Eternal One is their legacy, and may they find everlasting peace. And let us say, Amen. We recognize the recent passing of Brenda Sue Emrock and Marilyn Spiro the wife of our Rabbi Emeritus, Rabbi Jack Spiro. We recall the art site anniversary of Frida G. Aronson, Robert W. Bailey, Robert T. Basichus, Jean Berger Richmond, Rosa Davis Blank, Ida Mexic Kaplan, Harry Edward Kahn, David E. Constine Jr., Goldie K. Copeland, Jacob Crockin, Audrey Gordon Danoff, Fanny S. Glazer, Mark L. Goldstein, Phyllis German, Hannah Hacham, Ruth Hochberg, Jean I. Hoffheimer, Lucille Block Kessler, Esther Rachel Kofer Toller, Helen Kornblau, Jack M. Cruder, Nettie M. Levine, William Lovey, Leopold Lovey, Ellen Merwin Fraser, Joseph Nathan Sr., Howard J. Posner, Joseph M. Rubens Jr., Bernard Schneiser, Benjamin Shapiro, Henry P. Straws, Sarah L. Sussman, Leatrice Turrell, Miona Weisman, Lucille Herman Wallerstein, Moses Weinberg, Joseph Weiner, Evelyn Weiss. If there is anyone else here who is observing Shiva, the seven days following death, Shloshim, the 30 days following death, or is observing the yard site, the anniversary of a loved one's death, or if there's simply someone who you'd like to recall and remember this evening, I ask you to share their names with the community again as I scan the room, either aloud or in your hearts. We remember them now, they live in our hearts, and we pray that their memories always be for us an abiding blessing. And before we turn to the Mourner's Kaddish, we also pray that we do not have to add any more names to this list next week on either side of the Gaza border. I ask all who are in mourning to please rise. All who are observing a yard site to please rise. And as is our custom here at Congregation Beth Ahaba, the entire community to rise in support of one another and in memory of all those who came before us as we turn together to page 294 for the Mourner's Kaddish. Together. Yitkadal v'yitkadash shamei rabah v'yamah divrach hirutev yamlik malchuteh 
וחייכון ויומכון ובחיי דכל בית ישראל בגלה ובזמן קריב אמרו אמן יהי שמי רבה מבורך לעולם עולמי עמיה יתברק וישתבק ויתפאר ויתרומן ויתנשא ויתהדר ויתעלה ויתעלל שמי דקודשה ברכו לילה מנקו ברכתה ושירתה תוש בחטא ונחמתה דמירן ביומה ואמרו אמן יהי שלמה רבה מן שמיא וחיים עלינו ועל כל ישראל אמרו אמן עושה שלום במרומיו, הוא יעשה שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל, ואמרו אמן. May there be abundant peace from heaven and life for us, for all Israel and all the world. And let us say together, Amen. May the one who creates harmony and high bring peace to us, to all Israel and all who dwell on earth. And may God bring comfort to all who mourn among us and all who mourn in the world. And let us say it together, Amen. You may be seated. A few brief announcements this evening. Shabbat Shalom. Welcome everyone who is here in our sanctuary and everyone watching at home on YouTube again. And we want to thank Stacey Grabner for sponsoring the Bema Flowers and the Preneg before services this evening in honor of the B'nai Mitzvah of her children, Ruthie and Baron Burkle, which will be tomorrow. Sunday, October 15th, this Sunday, join us at Deep Run Park at 4 p.m. for our annual pet blessing, the Bark Mitzvah, and all that good stuff. Bring your cats, your dogs, your lizards, your birds, anything that can come out of the house. We'll have a treat for them, and we'll say special blessings for those important parts of our families. Join us next Friday, the same time, same places for our Shabbat services, and next week we'll be featuring the Beth Ahaba Choir. Uh, if you want Beth Ahaba t-shirts, mugs, and more, check out the signs in the lobby for information on how to get the Beth Ahaba merch before Hanukkah, order by this Sunday, October 16th. This Sunday, October 16th, the ordering pages will close. So if you want your sweatshirt or hat, now is the time. And next Friday begins our pulpit exchange and friendship building. So come to Shabbat services for one, the first of two opportunities to meet and to get to know members of the 3rd Street Bethel AME Church. Their pastor, Reverend Boyd, will be delivering the sermon right here. From this spot, it will be different from the one I gave tonight, I promise. He'll be here October 20th, and there'll be a free congregation to follow for everyone so we can get to know and build relationships with our guests. Um, please register for that dinner, and more information will be coming to your inboxes, so stay tuned for that. Let us... Take a moment to take a deep breath. Try to find some peace this Shabbat. As I pray for all of us, give a rechacha donai vayishmarecha, yeer adonai panave lecha vichunecha, yisar adonai panave lecha vyasim lecha shalom. May God bless us and keep us. May God be with us through this challenging time and always. And may God grant us health, happiness, blessing, and peace. God, we pray, peace. And let us say together, Amen. And we'll say the blessing over the bread together so we can enjoy Shabbat dinner. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam hamotzi lechem min haaretz. Lucas, you want to come up and bring bread and chocolate to everybody? And as the bread and chocolate are coming around, I ask everyone to turn to page 353, page 353, for our closing song at the very bottom of the page, Od Yavo Shalom Aleinu. Peace will surely come to us, to everyone. Salam for us and the entire world, we pray.
O Jevo Shalom Alenu, O Jevo Shalom Alenu, O Jevo Shalom Alenu, Ve Al Kulam. O Jevo Shalom Alenu, O Jevo Shalom Alenu, O Jevo Shalom Alenu, Ve Al Kulam. Salam Alenu, Ve Al Kulam. Salam, salam. Lam, aleinu ve'al kol ha'olam. Salam, salam. Ojevo shalom aleinu, ojevo shalom aleinu, ojevo shalom aleinu ve'al kulam. Ojevo shalom aleinu, ojevo shalom aleinu, O Jevo Shalom Aleinu Ve'al Kulam Salam Aleinu Ve'al Kol Ha'olam Salam 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 Aleinu Ve'al Kol Ha'olam Salam Salam O Jevo Shalom Aleinu O Jevo Shalom Aleinu O Jevo Shalom Aleinu Please repeat after me, Adonai Oz. Le'amo yitain. Adonai yivarech. Et amo vashalom. May God bless us all with health and strength. May God bless us all with peace. Amen. Shabbat. Shabbat shalom.